So many iconic. Like, this is more memorable to me than even Battle for Bikini Bottom. Welcome home, Rep Pack. It's your boy Marcus here, and welcome to Comfort Cartoons, a show where I collect absolutely everything from the late 90s, 2000s, all the way to the modern day. And I'm also trying to create the world's biggest SpongeBob and Nickelodeon collection. And I, I didn't tell you guys, but I have a dog that was featured in Nintendo Dogs. She was. She was there. The most needy of species, the Daisy Atsus. But I hope you guys are having an amazing day. And if you guys aren't, you know the drill. Nickelodeon gaming flip? What's a game sphere? Only the most sophisticated gaming experience ever created by humans. It's about to get a whole lot brighter, Rep Pack, because your boy is here. And today we are going to be on a gaming journey in the Cartoon Cavern because, guys, as you guys know, we're trying to create the world's biggest Nickelodeon collection. And I mean, we've got video games for days, right? Absolutely. Even friggin' arcade systems themselves. We have a lot of video games. But if I'm going to be trying to go for this world's biggest collection, we need to catalog all this stuff. And it's going to take, well, probably like a year. I don't even know how long. A long time! But we got to start with the video games because that's one of the things that I feel like adds in the slowest today. We're going to put on screen the game count right here and we are going to go through my entire Nickelodeon game collection. I'm not saying I have every Nickelodeon game ever made, but I definitely have one iteration of most of them. Whether it be on GBA or PS2 or PS3 or PS4 or PS5. God, we're old. It's a lot of that consoles. Lot. By the time your kids are this age, they're going to be like on PS10. But we are going to be starting right over here on the right side of the room because we have multiple games inside of here. And it's going to be an awesome video, guys. We are going to go through a complete time machine through different video games that have existed for Nickelodeon. You may see some you've seen before with a little nostalgic vibe, and you may see some that you've never seen before, which is what I'm here for. So let's check it out. All right, so the game counter is on screen. It's a game that we already have, but just on a different console. We'll still count it as a separate game because, I mean, ideally, I'd like to get multiple consoles for all of them. But let's go ahead and check it out. First two here. I have is my most nostalgic games of all time. We'll check them out later. But we got Bikini Bottom and the movie game. Then over here, we've got the three newest ones that are on the Switch. Grab all these. And then we've got two stacks right here of a Nintendo DS and also a couple of 3DS and DS ones. Oh, wait, and we got a Wii one back here. That guy's sealed, dude. I, I don't even know my own collection. I'm just like, whoa, that's sealed. But we got a tag of the toy bot. So we're going to grab this stack as well. I'm going to grab it carefully, move these guys out the way. All right, that's our first stack. We already had a huge stack. These are all Nickelodeon, like just Nickelodeon games exclusively. Okay, let's check these out. All right, so first off, we have SpongeBob Squiggle Pants, and this is a series of mini games, but I have played it on the Wii, but I've never played the DS version. I'm sure the games are very, very similar. Ryan will put it up on screen right now, though, but I already like the way this one looks, though, because that's the artwork for the Tops Robot SpongeBob card. You see, it's the exact same one. Yeah. The only thing they changed is the spatula. So, I mean, it's not like they even had to graphically create, like, a new character, you know? Yeah, it's smart, though. Yeah, it's really, really smart. I mean, licensed games have made a lot of money. <laughs> but we got Squiggle Pants. Next one up, we got SpongeBob Hero Pants. And, guys, I am going to talk a lot today. This is a lot of video games. But we got SpongeBob Hero Pants. Okay, I'm going to quiz you. What is his name? Sour Note. Okay, okay, okay! Go ahead and do the other way like that. Oh, they're gonna slap the back of my hand. <laughs> okay, I can do that if you want. No, I don't. <laughs> That's gonna hurt. But this game, I remember I played on this 360. The biggest thing about this was it was almost impossible to 100% it because the game is not that good. It's a platformer, but it's super clunky and they have way too many hidden items for you to have to replay the levels when you don't really want to replay those levels. <laughs> so I gotta go ahead and give this one a, you know, probably five out of 10 compared to some other SpongeBob games. The next one we have is Truth R square i will definitely have to play this one because i know it came out for playstation as well but it's just so cool because this was a tie-in episode like this was an episode you know truth of square we've seen it in here that's the classic episode where we kind of find out about plankton and mr krabs origin but like you know you would never see a full-blown game for an episode now you know what i mean oh yeah next up we have here is spongebob drawn to life which is its own game series but i did not play this one in particular but i did play the scribble knot series which was essentially how works the game puts you through different type of platforming situations and just the obstacles you have to get through and you have to draw the item in this case or in scribble knots type in the item and it would come up in game so you could use it to get through the obstacle but i feel like this is just a perfect tie-in because we just recently were watching this episode and i feel like spongebob just lends itself so well to this idea so why not make the draw to life video game about the same episode that essentially ties in with it okay now this one really interests me because i love all of 
the Nicktoons games. You know this. But the funny thing is, my favorite thing about is like all the previous generations were like this. Nicktoons, Battle for, you know, uh, Volcano Island. But then they just switched it to SpongeBob and Friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but in reality, isn't that what it is? Let's just be honest. It's SpongeBob and the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love the other guys, but we all know who's king, baby. Mr. Sponge Robert. So, I mean, that I kind of am okay with it, but I know how that could ruffle some feathers for some people. But the Gobs of Doom is awesome, and this one actually features Jimmy Neutron, which he was actually taken out of the third game. So this one is the last one to feature Jimmy. And also, tacking the power of Juju's in here. And if you guys want to see me open up that Burger King set, maybe we might... What? Nothing. We might open it up one day soon here, especially after, maybe after I play this game. You never know. But it's new 2009. This one is awesome. And this is the last of the Nicktoons uh, saga. Oh, and you know what's interesting in this one is as playable characters, you can play as Beautiful Gorges. Really? Yeah, from the uh, Jet Fusion movie. Dude, I always thought Jet Fusion was like the coolest dude when I was a kid. And then when you look at him now, you're like, bro looks like Dino Spumoni. Like, it <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even make sense. Play as the hero and the villain. Like, why is that such a 2009 thing? Just like Left 4 Dead, you're like, I gotta be the zombie now. That was a, a really interesting push that they had during that time, where like, a lot of video games are like, oh yeah, you get to be the villain. Yeah, and it's just cool. I never played it on the DS. I definitely gonna have to check this out, but I'm glad that we have it in the collection. But next up, we've got Volcano Island. This is Battle for Volcano Island. This is the second one. The first one that came out was Nicktoons Unite, but I would say most people would probably agree that this is the best one. Uh, it's just the most fun. You get to play as everybody. They had really kind of figured out that system when it was the first game i felt like in a lot of times you didn't really even need to switch characters this one is a lot of fun i highly recommend it but i gotta say with all of this magu you know woo woo lulu you know stuff it's like i think it was directly inspired from tack and the power juju being around at that time okay and that's where they could work in tack because he's in these games too but i feel like the deeper connection is bionicles because bionicles was like all about like inner island you know lore and like there's I can't remember what they're called. Not the Poopoo Nunu. But, but there's a people that are the Bionicle people. Essentially, Rhino put up on screen. If you were a Bionicle fan in the early 2000s, like everything was about islands and like Polynesian stuff for some reason. Okay, so this one right here, I've never played as well. It's got a sticker for the new game for 2009, and that is Become the Ultimate Fry Cook in SpongeBob Beach Party Cook Off. Only cook off I've been to is Eddie's million dollar one. This is crazy, but I mean, there's a new game that's actually out where you're basically doing the same thing. But dude, I didn't even realize at the start, this is the big one versus the big one. It's SpongeBob versus the big one. Wow, versus so, little Kahuna. Yeah, so maybe Jack Kahuna Laguna comes and gets a burger in the game. Who knows? If, if there is, Ryan will put it up on screen. But it looks like you're making, see, what did I tell you about Polynesian culture? Like, what did I tell you about? 2009, that was such a thing. Like, because now this is about making Hawaiian burgers. But look at this. What is that? Rankton? No, it's Flankton. Fake Plankton. Yeah. <laughs> that is a weird one. But we got that one in the collection nonetheless. This is the SpongeBob Boating Bash, which I did play on the Wii, and it was so much fun. It's like Grand Theft Auto with everything, but just everything out, but just the driving. I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable game, though. I highly recommend. More than most of these games, I would check out this one. I'll give this one a 9 out of 10. It was so much fun growing up with this game. Or, I mean, it was like 14, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I was a little bit behind, you know? We're all still growing, right? Yeah, Especially man. you. So you're definitely growing up with that. I'll take especially. That means you're still a part of it. <laughs> Okay, the next up we've got Attack of the Toy Bots on the Wii. This was the third version of the Nicktoons Unite Saga. Man, they just were like throwing tack in there. They were not giving up on tack. And you know the thing is, Nickelodeon didn't even invent tack. They bought tack. They, oh, so that's why they pushed it so hard. They're like, oh, we spent a lot of money on this tack. So you guys, you're gonna watch them. <laughs> And there's still, to this day, a cult following of TAC fans. If you're one of those people in the comments down below, let me know. Why? Yeah, let me know why. Like, seriously, just genuinely. Like, I'm not saying TAC's a bad show, but it's definitely not, like, up there with the top one. So if you would say TAC is your favorite Nickelodeon character, you probably have a good reason. So let us know in the comments down below. Then we got these three right here. Look at those. You're freaking bangers, man. This one right here is Nickelodeon Heart Racer. This is the first one, which is just not very good. <laughs> 
it's so minimal. There's only a couple of races, there's only a couple maps, zero customization, really. The Nicktoons All-Star Brawl, we all know this game was supposed to be $30, <laughs> and then they realized there was hype, and they're like, let's charge 50. <laughs> and everyone got upset. You're like, that wasn't worth 50. <laughs> yeah, if you can get Nick All-Star Brawls for like 20, 30 bucks, I recommend it. But I mean, here's the list of characters on there. Not that many. Since then, they did add though. Since we've played this game on the channel, they've added Garfield, they added Nigel Thornberry, they added- Paddled? Oh. Added. So I mean, they've got some cool characters, but the best game of all of these is for sure the Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Just because it was already an amazing game, they had to, well, re-moisturize it. Yeah. <laughs> but look forward to Nick Kart Racers 3 on screen, who actually has Jimmy and Timmy as playable characters. They haven't been in a video game in I don't even know how long. Ryan, you pop up the screen for Jimmy and Timmy. They haven't been in a game in years. And Cindy Vortex is a playable character, and she has never, ever, She's never been rendered in any video game other than this model, which is from the Jimmy Neutron movie. It makes no sense at all. Even though some of the games came out after the show was over, that's still the model they used, Parker. You can tell he's really passionate about this. <laughs> it's really <laughs> annoying. So we get an updated model of Cindy Vortex as well. I can't wait for that game. But hey, man, before we move on to any shelves here, we got to talk about the kings, the guys that set the foundation for all of these sequels and prequels and other games to come out the kings the kings the staple king two of the best playstation 2 games to ever release oh. this game was so much fun i don't think i need to spend too much time on battle for bikini bottom you have the iconic robot fights you've got the fact that you get to actually walk around bikini bottom itself but let's go ahead and talk about the spongebob movie game which they use the same engine off of this game to make this game as well and i can never forget the ending battle to this game did you play this one uh yeah i kind of watched my brother play it's kind of how the my end? household worked it you remember the end? It actually works into the biggest joke of the whole thing. I don't, actually. So, the end of the game, you have to use the Krusty Krab tables to reflect the head, the light off of his head back into his eyes to distract him, and then you attack him. It was amazing. Like, I can never forget. And then, oh, driving the paddy wagon. So many iconic. Like, this is more memorable to me than even Battle for Bikini Bottom. Like, this is amazing, but I love the SpongeBob movie. So to be able to play alongside of it was a dream come true. My two favorite games. We're going to continue on here. Without a doubt, my two favorite games, for sure. And then we have the Yellow Avenger again on the DS. We have it on the PSP and the DS. Then we've got this one right here, the movie game. We've got the Xbox version on. These ones we won't spend too much time on. We've got the first game, the Lost Spatula for the GBA. You thought they were done? No, bro. There's more. And then down here, we've got uh, another couple, couple copies of the racing games, of course, because it's in the racing section, kind of, so to speak. Kind of, right? There's a little sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I put it there. Okay. I, do that. I need validation, Parker. Okay, so right here we have the Yellow Avenger, and both these are sealed, and I will say, if you're looking for a SpongeBob vintage-ish video game for an affordable price sealed, this is the best one to get. You can find it on the PSP and also on the DS for like less than 30 bucks usually. You'll see people charging like over 100 for it, but you know, those people, this is what we do with these people. They're floating off in a bubble, Parker. Oh. So we're not gonna pop it. They're gonna get to the surface and they're gonna die. But the Yellow Avenger game is kind of cool because this was freaking 10 years almost before Avengers came out. So there was like no real branding and using the name Avengers for any particular reason, other than the fact that it's actually referential to the Avengers comic book like era. Cause SpongeBob does play a superhero in it. And you can see you've got Mermaid Man's actual belt on there with all the different buttons and doodads and all that stuff. Like, you know, these little things, that's the definition of doodads. I don't really understand why the Wumbo belt is upside down. I don't know why either, because, you know, Spongebob felt like being regular mermaid man. You didn't want to go full freaking giant man size on anybody. Then we got Nick Kart Racing 2, which is way better than the first one. I mean, JoJo C was in it. Come on. That's enough said. She didn't even go to the Kids' Choice Awards. Then next up, we've got the Switch version of the racing game, which is sealed because this one right here, if you look at the side, they actually spelled Nickelodeon incorrectly on the bottom one. So that's an alternative, you know, copy of this particular disc. So I definitely had to make sure I got it. I think I looked around at a couple targets so I found one. And then we got on the Xbox, the sealed copy of All-Star Brawl. We won't spend too much time on it. Same game, a little bit better graphics probably than the Switch one, but same game. All right, and then probably one of the most disappointing SpongeBob games of all time. We have Creature from the Krusty Krab. I will never, 
forever. It's burned into my head. The trailer for Creature from a Crisis Crab. I feel like we've played it on the channel before, but just the graphics of SpongeBob on that plane, the plankton, like running. And then you got these screenshots like this in the back. And then you play the game and it's just the slowest, boringest thing ever. And you guys know I'm honest when it comes to SpongeBob. I love SpongeBob. But this game, comparatively to some of the other classics that they've released for SpongeBob, definitely not the best SpongeBob game, but so much fun. And graphically, it's a vibe. Like it just has a, such a cool vibe. It's very, very murky and dark, but that's not what I'm looking for a SpongeBob necessarily, you know? Yeah. Okay, then next up, I have no clue this game. And this is SpongeBob Surf and Skate Road Trip. But the funny thing about this game is that it's on the Wii as well. And besides SpongeBob Surfing, I challenge you to find anything else in that game that is about SpongeBob. The ocean, the background, the music, nothing is SpongeBob except for the character you are playing as. Like they could have just made Tony Hawk Pro Skater put SpongeBob SpongeBob there and then called it a whole different game. Like that's essentially what they did. Cause I'm pretty sure this game has to exist in some other format somewhere else. And then they just brought SpongeBob into it. All right, this game is crazy. I've never played it and it's just an interesting product in general. And I don't know how many copies there are out there. I assume this one probably isn't too hard to get, but just so much fun if you want to watch SpongeBob snowboarding, skateboarding and surfing. <laughs> Okay, now this one is, I feel like they made this one, Plankton's Robotic Revenge, just as a apology for this one. <laughs> it's very similar. The marketing was very similar. You know, obviously most of the time Plankton's the, uh, the antagonist, but this game is just so geared around Plankton. He's a giant robot, you know? Oh, he's not a giant now. He's just a giant robot. I feel like this was definitely a, an apology for this game being kind of rough. Or they were like, oh, we could do that better and sell it again. Who knows? But we got Plankton's Robotic Revenge right here. Here. Oh my god, you remember these Club Nintendo things? Yes. Do you remember I would always ask you for them at school? Actually, yeah. Yeah. What did you do with them? I got this Club Nintendo Mario hat on screen. No, that's cool. It wasn't worth it. Yeah. Oh. But thank you. All right, and then we got the Lost Spatula, which this game is really, really funny because they have this one render of Bubble Bass that I just can't get out of my head and it's on the back of my eyelids. Oh my God. <laughs> he is so bad. He looks like freaking pilot episode Carl, but this is one of the first SpongeBob games to ever come out. I think it might even be the first, but it's essentially that you go around looking for these Lost Spatulas. But the fun part about that is, is that becomes a huge factor in the Battle for Bikini Bottom. It's finding those golden spatulas. You remember? Oh yeah. So like, that actually came from this original game, which is just so fun. And all of them, even some of the newer games, you'll see stuff that's referential to, well, for example, Cosmic Shake, you can even see the Tiki's from Battle for Bikini Bottom in the background in this shot right here. So they always kind of do that. Like the SpongeBob game kind of have their own long canon, I feel like it's, it's really fun to watch out for. And then we've got my DS in my SpongeBob DS case, which has Mario Bros on here, which is the best game ever if you're poor. I did not have this game until recently. I used to just play with other people by connecting their DS. I only played four maps for five years. Dang. But man, were those some good maps. <laughs> but that game is a clutch game if you want to do multiplayer. Anyway, guys, we are actually done with that first shelf. We're going for the big, big, big man himself, the arcade cabinet. Let's go ahead and check out all that stuff. Now we're definitely be getting out of the sponge territory because I think so far almost all of that was SpongeBob. Okay, so here is the big shelf itself. One of my favorite things in the room is this GBA display. As of right now, this is what goes up here on top of the arcade machine. But it, whenever the day comes where I get the perfect item, to go up on top of here. We'll be taking these games down and putting them more, you know, more like, more adjacent uh, to the, uh, the, the the DVDs down here. You like that, huh? You didn't see that coming. <laughs> so we got all of these guys. We're gonna line them up one day, but for right now, that's gonna stay in the display. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the top row up here. We'll just keep moving our way down. Let's do it. This looks like a lot less. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, I, think, yeah was, I think these are spread out. It was very voluminous. <laughs> voluminous. Well, right. talk about volume, I got two of them for you. We got volume one and volume one of Rugrats All Grown Up and Fairly Odd Parents. So right here, this is the Rugrats one. This is not a game. This is actually just multiple different episodes that are on it. This was to combat and kind of uh, compete with 
the video now that you see over there the video now was an iconic system at that time it was only in black and white so when they dropped these joints in color everybody was flipping out my mom she flipped out she started throwing our tv out the window she said they got video on the game boy i've never seen color on tv before <laughs> that's common stuff so the gbo is a big deal we're not gonna spend too much time in there but we got two of those these are the only two sealed ones i have in the collection i do hope to one day be able to get at least all the cartridges for them but considering the artist episodes i'm not that like in a rush to get them considering i have like a giant nickelodeon dvd collection okay now this is a banger dude uh, everything involves spongebob everything can we go to anything that doesn't have spongebob well, no 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 even outside of nickelodeon everything involves spongebob <laughs> that's true you know i've actually been uh the, the leading signer for petitions for them to add spongebob to the avengers and they won't do it all right <laughs> so but this is sick tunes freeze frame now this is an awesome awesome game like if i i, I say this a lot but of any of these games this is the best way <laughs> What? You just said, oh, those are my two best favorite over there. Oh, you no, don't, can't even compete, man. I'm a liar. When it comes to Nickelodeon things, I am a liar. I, I will say a lot of things are my favorite things. That's because they're all my favorite things. But this guy right here is Pokemon Snap meets Nickelodeon. I was just going to say that. Well, yeah, it's very apparent. <laughs> but it's not. Bro's running around with a Canon M50. <laughs> like you think is not apparent. So this game is one of the few games that actually fuses all of the characters together together without it being like a unite style thing because this is actually all grown up tommy right there so when you play the game you play as different characters originally in the beta version of this game all the different characters were gonna have special abilities based off who they were but in the final cut of the game they ended up actually just doing like all the characters essentially being the same just kind of a skin but you go around taking pictures of different things in the different nickelodeon worlds but you go as timmy turner through bikini bottom you go as spongebob through retroville absolutely awesome just so much fun if you're a nickelodeon fan this is like this is as good as it gets when it comes to just like Easter eggs and a fun lore. So awesome. I got that guy sealed. All right, next up, we got Back on the Barnyard, which is a classic as well. One of the first ever open world games, man. This was open world on the PlayStation. You could go around the farm, go to different places, have different mini games, depending on where you went on the farm. So much fun. Then we've got the Plankton. Then we've got the Creature from the Krusty Krab. We already talked about this one, but the GBA version is so cool as well because you get these awesome artworks in the back like freaking rat pink spongebob right there so cool and then next up we've got a sealed copy of the lost spatula as well you guys saw me show that game a little bit ago here but this is a sealed copy of that very same absolutely amazing i love this little image right here in the back of the bus station at rock bottom so cool next up we've got the revenge of the flying dutchman you guys already know this is a cover that was after my heart this is my favorite probably of the spongebob covers i said covers i said covers though yeah you did yeah you caught yourself and this one would be my favorite of the inside man <laughs> <laughs> no but this one's really cool it's got the dutchman on it and then you got mr krabs on the back there who is not clancy brown in this game <laughs> look at squidward in the front i just noticed this look out i'm going to do the thing but the fun part about this game is this was the first ever 3d spongebob game we got on ps2 and again they used this engine to make battle for bikini bottom which then became the spongebob movie so really we wouldn't have two of the greatest spongebob games of all time Time, had it not been for the bullet we took that was this game because <laughs> this game was not as good as those two for sure all right then next up we've got attack of the toy bots again but this is for the gba as well amazing cover that's it for that one next up we've got enter the clef which is such a fun one but the weird thing about this one is it's really thick and the reason why it was like i feel like they printed this game completely and they were like damn it, damn it the manual how will they know how to play the game and they just like sealed it inside of those ziplocs like it's just odd i think that, that was a mistake some kind but this is just a classic one one. Next up, we got Clash with the Anti World, which is an amazing game. It's the best of the Fairly Odd Parents games, in my opinion, and not just that many others. But also, not just that, this is the final Fairly Odd Parents game we ever got. Wow. Yep. This was the last time Timmy appeared in a game. But I showed you guys there's two variations of this copy. There is the American copy, which is right here with Cosmo smiling. And then there's the evil version of Cosmo right here with him with the smirk, you know, and this is the Anti Cosmo. Even though it's not Anti Cosmo, like Anti Cosmo, you've seen him before. He's like kind of smart. You you know, and he's like very fancy, you know, anti Wanda is really dumb, you know? Yeah. But they're blue. Right. So this is not anti Cosmo. They just kind of dressed him up like that. And I did not know why they changed the cover, but here is the reason why I finally found out the answer. This one was released by Nelvana, which you remember this intro from uh, Franklin, uh, Little Bear. 
So this was distributed by them. Whereas this one, if you see, was actually distributed by Nick Games in the US. So because this one was distributed by a different company, they did go ahead and change the cover for whatever reason, but it wasn't because of the cover. It was just different distributors decided to do different things with the boxes. Weird little difference. I still prefer this copy just because it's a little bit more unique, but this one is more accurate to the game itself. Okay, next up we got Rugrats Go Wild, which is the movie slash game where the Rugrats and the Wild Thornberries meet up. Both the movies were successful. They had done the Rugrats film, they had done the Wild Thornberries film. So they thought, why not put them together? And they got together, and here's the iconic scene. What are you doing, Chucky? You gonna move, whack, whack? <gasps> And then we've got the Rugrats Go Party, which is kind of cool. It's supposed to be a, you know, a pun on Rugrats Go Potty, but this is essentially your Mario Party type of game. It's a four player game with multiple different mini games within it. Super fun, super cute game. Glad we have it in the collection. Then we got the Fairly Odd Parents Shadow Showdown, which is another really cool game as well. Fun part about this game is they actually go to Yugo Potamia. Oh really? Yeah, so you get to see Yugo Potamia. I have a feeling that we have intruders. <laughs> Intruders they may be, but my friends they are. <laughs> we got Castle Capers next, which is, I don't think it's the last Rugrats game, but one of the last ones. I always thought that the actual bit characters themselves was a little weird. And on top here, you'll see there's no sun damage to this particular box, but for some reason, the print quality is really bad on the top and on the back as well. But Castle Capers nonetheless. Then we've got Volcano Island. We've already talked about this one. Awesome game though, still. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Wild Thornberries movie, which is my favorite game because every single level you get to see Eliza almost get stolen off into nowhere. Like one time she's getting pulled off by a helicopter, next she's getting tugged away by a jeep of some kind. If you don't pass the missions, Eliza just dies on every single one of the missions. It's kind of hilarious and kind of amazing. Next up, we've got Kimmy and Susie in their very own game with Angelica titled All Grown Up Express Yourself. This was like one of those classic Nicktoons arcade like uh, website game where you could kind of like dress up a character however you wanted to make them look. Maybe you could upgrade their car or something using like JPEG images on the screen. Same kind of thing, but Rugrats All Grown Up theme. But I still think it's really cool because I think this is the only game that we got that was in relation to the All Grown Up sequel series. And sticking with Classy Supo, we've got Rocket Power Power zero gravity, but I'll never forget there were so many glitches in this game. It was like super glitchy. But if you're gonna play this game, remember, no shoobies allowed. You know, it's the late 90s. We had to find another way to separate ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you may be the same, the same hair color, skin, uh, sexual preference. But you're not from here, you shooby. And then next we've got two of my favorites again. We've got lights, camera pants. I'll never forget getting this game in the Walmart when it dropped. I freaking flipped out. I got it on the Xbox original. Then we've got a Atlantis Square Pan is another game that is based off a of special that was on the show at the time. And this game is Guitar Hero if you had no fingers. But you can't make a singing slash rhythm game based off of a series where you got David Bowie in it and he didn't get a song. The next up, we've got Jimmy Neutron and the Attack of the Twonkies. This game will forever give me nightmares because still to this day, I've not caught all the Twonkies. There's so many, Parker. There is so many in this game. But if you don't know what a Twonky was, it was essentially kind of like the Jimmy Neutron universe version of a gremlin. It was so cool though. Very, very vicious looking, but I highly recommend the game. And then finishing it up, we've got the classic Jimmy Neutron the game the movie game at that just a classic classic I love the box on it like this whole like steel style like bolted down even to the bottom it looks like they bolted that thing together you know like Jimmy made it in his backyard just a cool cool cover and I'm so glad that we have this one in the collection brand new and sealed but that actually can ends our entire display up there now we've got a couple little small games that we're gonna go ahead and check out at the end here stick around for that but you know the drill scan it
right, keeping the game count going, we've got Obstacle Odyssey 2, Time Trouble. We've got the Naked Brothers Band, and we're not gonna do full scans, these are just bonus games. We've got the PC of SpongeBob and Jimmy Neutron. We got two copies of Rugrats on PlayStation. We got another copy of Creature from the Krusty Krab. We have El Tigre, which I've never played, but sounds like it'd be fun. We got United on the DS. We got Dora Super Spies. We got Spongebob's big idea on the VTech, cause that's a thing. We got Nicktoons moving, if you haven't moved to the like button, do that already. And then we've got the four PlayStation titles, which is all of the Unites in order, in order to play the entire series. That is just my favorite whole little setup here, besides all the other things that I called my favorite today. And then we've got the Wii Fit and the Naked Brothers Band on the Wii as well. And that actually completes all of our games. That is the game count. If you guys want to see a similar video to this in regards to my Cartoon Network and Disney collection of video games, let me know and we'll make that happen. But that's everything. Counter done on screen. That is how many games we have in the collection. It is a lot. And we're going to title all of those. We're going to make a title for each one of those, take pictures of all of them. Getting a world record is not easy. But now we got to put a lot a lot of games back. Alright guys, that is actually for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, make sure you smack that like button. It was a lot of Nickelodeon goodness. It was so fun going through all those different nostalgic bangers over the years from Nickelodeon. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys subscribe so you guys do not miss stuff like that in the future. And also check out this video screen right here, which is the last epic collection video on this channel. I can assure you, it was freaking awesome. And not just that, make sure you subscribe. You're not going to miss the next video coming out soon. But that's actually it for this one. I'll see you guys over there. And as always, Rep Pack, I'll see you beautiful people in the next one. Adios. Bloop.